All right, give me that breaking news, whoosh. This afternoon, George Soros' management fund disclosing that it has upped its holdings in the shares of Monsanto, leading company in the agriculture, chemicals, and seed space. is also another sign of strong growth in investing in agriculture. Charles Nyberg is a managing director and analyst at Dalman Rose. Uh, Charles was uh, formerly at Morgan Stanley, where he relaunched its commodity specialty and fertilizer equity research practice. He knows a lot about the chemical industry as well as the fertilizer business. Charles, good to have you with us on Bloomberg. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about the chemical sector, because I'm interested in George Soros and his uh, increase in the position of Monsanto. What do you think that's about? Is that just the play that farmers are going to need as much help as they can to increase yields per acre. Well, yeah, and the current fundamentals would seem to indicate that next year there's probably going to be a fairly large increase in corn, planted corn acreage, and Monsanto certainly is a major player in the corn seed business. Now, in corn seeds and corn and growing corn, is that regarded as one of the most uh, sort of extensive, cr the, the crop that has the most extensive use of herbicide, pesticide, and, and fertilizer? Yeah, typically it is. It's also the biggest cash crop in the U.S., so it gets a lot of attention from all the players in the space. And so what's the chemical industry like as far as it you know when you talk about agriculture right now do you like it are you bullish uh, generally at least for the time being yeah we've got a very very good set of fundamentals for the agricultural space looking at least into the spring we're going to probably see a very strong planting there and then we'll see how the weather is for next year and we'll go from that point all right so if you're looking at the the chemical industry and you look at ethanol as a result of uh, producing corn tell me about methanex because this is uh, the kind of thing you learn about when you're learning about what ethanol rules and regulations are in the United States, because methanol is something they've been trying to phase out. Yeah, I mean, in the U.S., we don't see much use of methanol in the fuel markets, and that's really one of the places where Methanex can do its greatest amount of growing. Uh, but methanol is very similar in a lot of ways to ethanol and can be added to fuel in the same basic proportions, maybe a little bit higher. And, in fact, China has begun adopting methanol standards like we have for ethanol standards. So in China, you see things like M85, M100, and they're mo they seem to be moving toward an M15 standard, where M is methanol as opposed to E in the U.S. where we see ethanol. So why do you like the shares of Methanex then? Well, the fuel market is exceptionally large, and methanol as a product has only a very, very small piece of it. And if they can even begin to capture a small percentage, it would be mean enormous growth for the product globally. And is this because what the product globally is not under the government, the kind of tight government controls that it is here in the United States? Yeah, um, it, it's like I said, it substitutes very nicely for ethanol. It's an additive. It reduces the uh, demand for oil-based product in gasoline because it's either natural gas or coal-based. So it has a lot of advantages for countries that don't have oil as a natural resource and would have to otherwise import it and turn it into gasoline. What's the strategy when you're talking about chemical companies now in terms of feedstocks? Because our feedstock prices, let's say natural gas, are they low and that's going to help margins? Well, in the case of Methanex, it, it isn't really much of a help because they don't produce much here in North America. Their major production operations are in places like New Zealand, Chile. They're going to be starting a new plant in Egypt. They have uh, plants in the Caribbean. All of these are generally low natural gas cost areas. And in this case, natural gas is a direct input to the production of methanol. Uh, in the U.S., the chemical facilities that we are talking about are mostly based on a product called ethane, which comes out of the same stream but is not necessarily quite as low priced as, as meth methane is, which is the natural gas stream. All right, but you like the shares of Methanex, Very and much. you also like the shares of Eastman Chemical. Yes, uh, Eastman recently uh, divested its PET business. That's the plastic that goes into the, into the bottles for water and soda and such. And that's going to be and will be in the near future a very difficult business to, to be in. They were at one time the global leader in that marketplace, but it since has gotten very crowded, uh, both in terms of players and in terms of product. So it's going to be difficult to earn a lot of money there, and they chose to divest that. Is it going to be difficult to make money in fertilizer now that BHP Billiton has stepped away from potash? 
No, I think fertilizer will be, again, a, a very good year coming up in large part because the globe and the world need a fairly large amount of grain after this past year, which was not quite as good as the years we've seen prior to this. So as a result, we're going to see application rates probably higher. We're going to see more acreage being planted and heavier use of fertilizers. So fertilizers should have a very nice year going into next, what's for the, next year. What's the best stock to invest in if you want to play fertilizer right now? Right now, it's a, a bit of a toss-up. We, we have generally liked CF in the past, largely because of their nitrogen position, which is very heavily used in corn. Uh, but more recently, Potash Corp, since it's fought off the, the BHP, bid uh, looks a little bit better to us because its valuation seems to have come back in a little bit, in large part because the bids seem to have capped it for a time being. All right. I want to thank you very much, Charles Niver, coming to us from Dalman Rose, giving us some insight into what's going on in the world. The chemicals, Eastman Chemical, as well as uh, Methanex, and also taking a look at uh, Potash and CF Industries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.